Ladies and gentlemen, could you please welcome to the stage, Avan Aristogeta! South America, thank you so much for coming tonight to see my show, Chorizo Sizzle. Chorizo Sizzle is a show about food. We're going to talk about food for an hour. Are you okay with this? <laughs> Just food. This show is about uh, being an immigrant and culture and, and, and learning uh, about your new culture through food, adapting to your new culture. This is about, I want to tell you that after four years living in Australia, I, I already feel I'm becoming more Australian because I'm relating to food in a more Australian way. Um, last year, uh, I, I remember the day where I, uh, I felt I was becoming more Australian. Uh, I felt the change, the metamorphosis <laughs> in my body. I just said metamorphosis. How about that word for an English second language, motherfuckers? It's a great word. <laughs> it's a great word. I want to be a good immigrant in Australia. I want to show you that I care about the language. I want to speak proper English. I want my comedy shows to be a plethora of big words. <laughs> See what I did there? I said that in a very nonchalant way, in a very... <laughs> nonchalantly, nonchalantly. Look at those faces. Oh my God, this is an immigrant. This is a foreigner speaking English as a second language. And he's saying big words. <laughs> this is unfathomable. <laughs> The metamorphosis was relating to food in a more Australian way. I went to Bunnings on a Saturday morning. As soon as I smelled the sausage sizzle, I was like, oh my God, sausage sizzle, fuck yeah, fucking great. This is bloody brilliant. Fucking beauty, mate. Fucking. Oh my God, what's happening to me? That wasn't me four years ago. The first time I smelled a sausage diesel here in Australia and I smelled that burn saturated fat for the first time. That disgusting smell. I was like, oh my, it reminded me of the riots back home. Like, oh my God, there's someone burning inside a car. And it's a hairy man. It's a hairy man and his dog. They're burning inside a car. Please help them. They're gonna die. Not anymore, I love a sausage sizzle now. I realize the sausage sizzle in Australia is about the sausage. You don't give a fuck about any other element of the, of the sausage sizzle. For example, the onions, you don't care about the onions, you just burn them. Just burn them, mate, just burn them. It's just for the smell, just the smell. It's for the customers. If you burn them, they will come. The bread, you don't give a fuck about the bread. It's white bread, not even fiber. It's a clear bag, not even a brand. The cheapest bread you can find. And it's a square bread for a long sausage. <laughs> Come on guys, this is Australia. This is a first world country. I know you know there's a thing called hot dog bun. <laughs> hot dog bun is a great idea. Let me explain. A hot dog bun it's a long bread for a long sausage. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. Brilliant. But you, don't, but you don't care about the bread. You don't care about the bread because it's not about the bread, it's about the sausage. The sausage sizzle in Australia is about the sausage. It's not about the bread, it's not about the end. The, bre the bread in an Australian sausage sizzle is just a serviette you can eat. <laughs> You can wipe your face with it. You can wipe your fingers. You can eat it. It's an edible, organic, eco-friendly serviette. Australian made. Fucking great. Fucking. <laughs> fucking brilliant. 
Pardon <sighs> Listen, every time I love to cook, it's one of my favorite things to do. I love to cook and I love to talk about food. That's why I have a show about food. Cooking, I love to cook. And one of the things that I do, every time I eat something that I like, uh, is a little game that I have for, for myself. If I, if I eat something that I like, I want to replicate that at home. I want to replicate the exact same thing. So the exact same flavor, an aroma, an appearance, an organoleptic profile. <laughs> Fucking technical English, motherfuckers. <laughs> technical English. So when I, with the sausages, I wanted to replicate the exact bunning sausage sizzle. And I couldn't. I, I tried really hard. I tried to copy everything. I've got, I thought about everything. I couldn't do it. What's happening? What's happening? And I, and I called one of my good friends in, in, in Adelaide, uh, Kel Balnaves. He's a good friend of mine. He's like my Australian mentor. And I go, Kel, what am I doing here? There's something wrong here. What, I've done everything that I think is not the same flavor. What's going on? And he got, he got, he got it straight away. He went, mate, your sausages, mate. Too fucking expensive. <laughs> Like, really? Yeah, mate, this is fucking charity, mate. You need to, the cheapest sausages you can find. You have to, the cheapest ones. You have to think of you, as a uni student, mate. Just, and I went for the quest of the cheapest sausages I could find in Australia. And that's a scary quest. <laughs> because those sausages can be so cheap. Oh my God. Those, sometimes they're even five bucks a kilo. Those sausages are like 70% not meat. <laughs> And I was so disappointed. Oh my God, so disappointed. It was, what? Fuck, I was wrong. You don't give a fuck about the sausages either. <laughs> what, what can I learn now? What can I learn from the sausages? Or what can I learn? I thought, I thought you can learn a lot about a country just by looking at the way people eat. And I thought you care about the sausages. Now, now what? What can I learn? You don't care about anything. You don't care about the onions, you don't care about the sausages, you don't care about the bread. What can I learn? When you're a foreigner in Australia and you become friends, you, have, you cross that line, you have good Australian mates. Your good Aussie mates will tell you about the tall puppy syndrome. The tall puppy syndrome is like, what's the tall puppy syndrome? Mate, don't fucking stand out. We're going to fucking chop your head off, mate. <laughs> fucking, uh, yeah. The sausage is a great metaphor for teamwork, for the tall puppy syndrome. It's a great metaphor for... Uh, for synergy. It's a great metaphor for that principle that says that the whole is greater than the sum of its elements. Because every element of the sausage sizzle is shit. <laughs> but when you put them together, when you bind them together in this, uh, and with this magical glue, fucking tomato sauce, <laughs> it's the best snack in the world. It's amazing. I love it. I love a good sausage sizzle. It's brilliant. Fucking right. Another thing I, could, I learned from the sausage sizzle, you don't care, here in Australia, you don't care about bread when bread is not toasted. <laughs> if bread is toasted, you love it. You can eat anything on toast. It's your favorite thing to eat. My friends in back home in Venezuela, they ask me, tell me about Australia, what do they eat? Do they have like a traditional dish, like a national dish? Do they eat kangaroo, something like that? What do they eat? No, nah, just toast. <laughs> I just love toast. <laughs> Put it on a toast, you'll eat it. <laughs> you eat anything on toast. Vegemite on toast, eggs on toast, beans on toast, uh, uh, spaghetti on toast. <laughs> spaghetti on toast, let's talk about that. <laughs> when I heard spaghetti on toast for the first time, I thought, maybe you, you are, you, you're from Italian background. <laughs> And you still have your nonna and, and you go on Sunday lunch to your nonna's house and your nonna makes a lot of pasta and there's a lot of pasta and there's a lot of leftover pasta and you tell your nonna, nonna, can I have some pasta so tomorrow I can take to work and your nonna, yeah, bada bim, bada bim, yeah. <laughs> and you take some pasta, next morning you're at work, you make some toast, you reheat the pasta, you put it on the toast. Spaghetti bruschetta, bellissimo. <laughs> no! It's not that kind of spaghetti. It comes from a tin. That's not spaghetti. That's blob. That's, that's just 
blob on us. That's gelatinous carbohydrates over crispy carbohydrates. That's it. You're not, you're not eating food, you're eating a juxtaposition of textures. That's what I'm eating. That's a good word, isn't it? It's a great word. <laughs> Another thing you love to eat, avocado on toast. Avocado, on toast. it's your favorite thing to eat. Avocado, oh my God. Not just any type of avocado, any kind of, any, no, it's not sliced. No, it's not mashed like a potato. It is smashed. <laughs> you smash the avocado. You smash it. How come you're gonna smash an avocado? <laughs> Listen, the first time I read, because you can go to any cafe in Australia, any cafe in the country, you're gonna read that in the menu. Smashed avocado on toast. Smashed. When I read that on the, the first time, it said it says smashed, <laughs> not mashed. <laughs> Should be mashed. Smashed? <laughs> there's something wrong here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this menu was written by a foreigner. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, uh, is it smashed or mashed? It is smashed, smashed, not mashed, smashed. <laughs> like really, cause, cause, cause I'm a foreigner and speaking English as a second language, I try really hard, I wanna speak proper English, this doesn't make any sense. Hey, I am a foreigner too. Are you a foreigner too? Yes, I own a restaurant in Australia, what do you think? <laughs> It is smashed, smashed, not mashed. I understand your concern, let me explain, okay? I own the restaurants, but I take the orders from the customers. I still do, I've been doing this for 25 years, I still do this, okay? I take care of my customers, they pay the bills, they're good customers. But sometimes I get these stupid customers. You know these stupid customers, they change the menu for no fucking reason? You know these stupid customers? I have, a, I have a menu for a reason. I have a beautiful orchestrated production lying in the kitchen. They don't fucking care, they change the menu. You know these people, they go, can I have the eggs Benedict, but instead of porridge, can I have them fried? And instead of the hollandaise sauce, can I, don't put it on the top. Can you put in a little container on the side so I can dosificate at my own will? <laughs> you know these people, I hate those people. And so much hatred and rage just grows inside of me. I just fucking hate them but I don't say anything, they are the customers, they pay for the bills, I don't say anything. I go to the kitchen, I say, I take the docket, another stupid fucking customer changing their fucking menu! <laughs> and the cooks, they hate it as well, they fucking hate it because they have to think, they don't think when you do something from the menu, when you do something that is outside the menu, they have to think, they waste time, they and so much hatred and rage, just grows inside of them. But I, they cannot cook with hatred and rage. When you cook with hatred and rage, you transmit the hatred to the food, you will serve a plate full of hatred, they will eat hatred, and there's some sort of cancer, some sort of shit that's gonna happen to them. It's bad karma, it's bad karma. I don't want that to happen to my customers, so I go, yes! This stupid fucking customer changing the fucking menu, there's a lot of hatred and rage. We cannot cook with hatred and rage. We can't, we have to release the tension. So everybody to the avocado wall of catharsis. <laughs> So we get the avocado, we smash them against the wall! We smash them to the ground! We release the tension, we feel a lot better, we can cook whatever the fuck they want us to cook, okay? <laughs> and if someone orders avocado on toast, we just scrape the avocado off the wall. <laughs> and from the floor as well. Put it on the toast, we serve it today. Toast, you'll eat it because you love toast. But when bread is not toasted, you don't care about bread. You don't give a fuck about bread. As I said before, it could be a serviette you can eat. It could be a kitchen, kitchen utensil. You can wipe things with it. I think that's how fairy bread was born. <laughs> like, look, Timmy, there's hundreds of thousands all over the floor. What a mess. How are you going to clean this up? Oh, mommy.
stupid margarine full of trans and polysaturated fatty acids full of GMO shit from Monsanto you're killing me you mommy you're killing me I'm gonna be blind when I'm 36 but that's okay mommy's gonna clean the sprinkles I'm gonna clean the hundreds and thousands mommy listen this is the plan mommy the margarine acts like a glue so under the principle of addition and cohesion, <laughs> all, all the hundreds of thousands are gonna stick to the bread. All the hundreds of thousands are sticking to the bread. Look, mommy's working, it's amazing. It's working. I'm cleaning all the sprinkles. Done, done, done. Look, they stuck to the bread. It worked, mommy. They stuck to the bread. Now I'm going to eat this. Don't eat that, Timmy. You're gonna die from the floor. Yeah, no, you care, you bitch. about food. I'm obsessed with food. I'm obsessed. Let me explain why. Why is this guy talking about food so much? Let me explain. Um, I come from a, I come from Venezuela. I was born in Venezuela. I'm Venezuelan, but my family's from Spain. My mom and my grandmother from Spain. They're from Sevilla, España. Ole, Seville, Spain. So um, it's similar to Spanish people. It's the same thing as, as Italian or, or, or Lebanese or Greek. Uh, if you don't love food, you don't love your mom. Okay, so you have to be obsessed with food, otherwise you hate your family, okay? So I'm obsessed with food. I learned how to cook when I was 14 years old, and I loved it. And after cooking, after, 40, uh, after learning how to cook, when I grew up, I wanted to study cooking, and I, and I went to cooking school, and I loved it. And then I worked in restaurants, and then I studied food technology, and then I worked in breweries, and I'm fucking obsessed with the food science, with culture, everything related to food. I love it. I love it. And, and I, I just want to share knowledge. For example, the simple stuff. I want to share something very simple. Not that many people know about this. And we need to know about this. There are five basic flavors. Most people know four. But there's five. Only a few people know there's a fifth one. The normal four, bitter, sweet, salty, sour. There's a fifth one called umami. Make some noises if you knew about umami. Just, okay. <laughs> Just to let you know that I'm not, I'm not making this up, okay? Because umami sounds funny. <laughs> it's not bitter, sweet, salty, or sour, it's umami. Umami is a flavor, this, this flavor was discovered in Japan. It's a meaty, brothy taste that is neither sweet, salty, bitter, or, uh, or sour. It's, it's neither those flavors. It's, it's savory, it's different. Uh, umami in Japanese means delicious, yummy. Makes a lot of sense to me because it's the same word we use in, in Latin America when we see a beautiful woman passing by. We go, "Ooh, mommy." <laughs> that's, that's pretty much every reggaeton song. It's "Ooh, mommy, 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 ooh, mommy, um, <laughs> mommy." Why am I talking about mommy? Why, man? Why are you gonna talk about mommy? What's what's about mommy? Because one of the foods, this is Australia, you should know about umami. One of the foods with highest umami concentration in the world is Vegemite. In the, it's in the top three. It's loaded with umami. <laughs> Vegemite is a great example that too much of a good thing is a bad thing. <laughs> You know that you're not supposed to eat too much Vegemite. It's too much umami. Your taste bud will go, oh, fuck it, what the fuck is going on? Because <laughs> you know, when you're a foreigner, you, you, you're you being taught how to eat Vegemite for the first time, you get, oh, my, it's just a little bit, mate. It's not fucking Nutella. It's just a little bit. It's just a smear. 
just a thing layer, just a little bit, mate. Just a, just a, just a thing, just scrape it off a bit. Just you don't need much, mate. Just like, just very gentle, mate. Just fucking gentle strokes, fucking gentle strokes. Use these fingers, just like when you, yeah. <laughs> If it's your first time, you don't even need to do that, mate. Just fucking wave the toes over the jar. That's plenty. <laughs> Just get the fuse, mate. Just get it in ya. Get it fucking in ya. I'm, I'm so obsessed with food that my friends and family, they know that, that, that if they explain something to me, if I don't get it, if I don't understand, if they use a food metaphor, I will understand. They know this. Last year, my relationship, after 16 years together, ended. Yeah, good reaction, thank you. <laughs> this was my breakup conversation. My wife went like, you know our marriage is not doing well, right? No, it's not doing well with, ah! That was me. Um, <laughs> listen, we, we've been together for 16 years. We've grown apart, we're different people now. We love each other a lot. We care a lot about each, uh, about each other, but we no longer work as a couple. Do you understand this? No, I don't. Ah! Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Imagine I am a celiac now. <laughs> Imagine I'm gluten intolerant. <laughs> and you are a cookie. <laughs> I like you, but you make me sick. <laughs> I didn't want her to be sick, so I left <laughs> straight away. I had my chance to become a gluten-free cookie, but I didn't. Because gluten-free cookies taste like shit. <laughs> I am a gluten-full cookie by nature. Gluten is all I can offer, just gluten. I'm full of gluten. <laughs> It's hard, it's difficult to be single. My God. Eventually we'll start dating again. And um, I have to find a, a woman who I connect on a, on a foot level. You have, like, you have to have food compatibility. It's very important for me. Very important for me. We have to connect at different levels. Food compatibility is very important. So if I ever start dating, whenever, I will one day, I'm ready, I'm gonna go, I know, first date is gonna be pizza. Full of anchovies and capers and blue cheese. I want to know if she's going to stick around when I become a salty, dry, smelly old man, I know. <laughs> but full of flavor. <laughs> and then I have like a, like, like a questionnaire. I'm going to go, first question. I'm going to go on the first day. Do you eat awful? If she says no, that's it. We're done. But she says, yes, I eat. Yeah, do you like awful? Yes, I like awful. What sort of awful do you like? Oh, um... I like uh, liver, yeah, liver, okay. Uh, uh, kidneys, okay, kidneys. I like chicken hearts. Oh, chicken hearts, that's interesting. Chicken heart, you, you, how do you like the chicken hearts? Oh, I know how to cook them because I learned from Brazilian friends. They soak them in milk, we put oregano and cumin and garlic, and then, and put some, then I make some skewers. I put some olive oil and rocky salt, and then I grill them over charcoal. They're delicious. Oh, mommy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When I broke up, I thought my good Australian friends, my mates, my mates, I thought my mates were gonna be very supportive. I thought like, guys, I broke up. Ah, I just broke up, I'm torn inside, this is horrible. Ah! I thought my good Australian friends were gonna, oh, mate, fucking come here, mate, fucking, she'll be right, mate, she'll be right, you'll be right, everybody will be right, fucking. <laughs> You're a fucking legend, mate. You're a fucking bloody trooper. You're a fucking bloody reaper. All right, fucking, fucking muscles, fucking legend. Fucking... <laughs> no, that didn't happen. So disappointed to my Australian friends, with my Australian friends. I learned English from a book. <laughs> I went, guys, I broke up. This is horrible. The pain, ah, inside, ah. They went fucking great! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Why? What are you saying? That, mate, you've got an accent. You're from South America. You can do the salsa. You're a fucking walking stereotype, mate. You're gonna get so much pussy in Australia. <laughs> Guys, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> I'm not gonna be that guy. I'm gonna, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not gonna waste my superpower, my Latino superpower. I'm not gonna waste it. I'm not gonna go around just, over, no. Just be responsible with your superpower. You gotta find this woman. You gotta find this woman who I connect with so many different levels. That chicken heart lady. <laughs> if I ever find the chicken heart lady, I will go, yes, this is it. Release the Antonio. <laughs> Oh, you delicious woman. You are the condiment of my life. <laughs> These Australian guys, oh, I fucking Latino. Yeah, Australian guys, you know you have your stereotype when you travel overseas. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Aussie guys. You know when you travel overseas, you have the, the Australian hunk stereotype. Yeah, you know, but you go, fucking. <laughs> you go, look, look at those beauties, look at those beauties. What do you reckon? Shall we just fucking, beauties is just kind of fucking, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, my fucking crack, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Unleash the Wolverine! <laughs> How you going? <laughs> going all right? Fucking. Same thing. Same thing. <sighs> one of my favorite things to do is I love to cook. I love to cook. It's one of my favorite things to do. And then I started, I, I worked in a restaurant because, yeah, this is my passion. Let's work in a restaurant. It's fucking horrible to work in a restaurant. <laughs> it's horrible. You have to be a ninja. The thing that brought me to work in a restaurant, which was my love for cooking. Oh, I love cooking, let's cook more in a restaurant. No, you cannot enjoy the cooking because all this so much pressure and, and, and just hectic and everything's fast. You cannot, it's horrible. It's, it's hectic, you cannot enjoy the cooking. You can't. If you never work in a restaurant, in a kitchen in a restaurant, just think about this. Imagine you're taking a shit. <laughs> and someone's knocking at the door. Hurry up! Hurry up! Where's the shit? Give me the shit! Hurry up with the shit! How long? How many minutes for the shit? Table 25 is this the shit! Hurry up with the shit! Table 30. All the shit is ready for table 25. We're just waiting for your shit. How about one minute? Two minutes? Three minutes? Hurry up with the shit! Where's the... I don't have the shit! I can't deliver the shit! I'm sorry, chef! I don't have the shit! I can't deliver... It's exactly like that! It's exactly like that! I can't deliver the shit! So I say, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna work, I'm not gonna work anymore in a restaurant because I still love cooking. I'm gonna cook at home for friends and family. And now with all your food limitations by choice, you're making fucking impossible to please you all. <laughs> hey guys, come over. Let's cook. So I'm gonna cook for you guys. Just come up, come to my place. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't eat dairy and I don't eat gluten. I only eat organic. I only eat raw food. I am a paleo. I'm a vegan. I'm a vegetarian. I don't like coriander. <laughs> one once. Really, I heard this one. Sorry, I don't eat soup in summer. <laughs> really? You don't eat soup in summer? Yeah, because soup is hot. And summer is hot. And you sweat. And you sweat because soup is hot in summer. is hot. And soup is not for summer. Soup is for winter. Because winter is cold. It makes sense with soup in winter. It's not because you didn't... You, you. Listen. Venezuela, my country, is a tropical country. We have summer all year long. You think we don't like to eat hot soup in tropical countries? You think one of the most delicious soups in the world, laksa, tom yum, pho. Do you think these soups were created to warm up your bodies in the cold winters of Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam? <laughs> Hot. 
because you sweat. It's okay to sweat when you eat food. That's okay. You're not forcing anything. It's just food and it's the weather and it's okay. It's food and the weather. I'm not forcing anything. Listen, I could be in a 40 degree summer and I can eat a Vietnamese pho, which is the most delicious soup in the world. It's a perfect soup. Fucking perfect soup. It's got everything you need in a soup. Oh, it's okay. It's soup and it's hot and I sweat. Whatever. It's okay. I'm not forcing anything. Bikram yoga, on the other hand. <laughs> Yeah, it's 45 degrees. Close the windows. <laughs> Stay in here. Let's stretch. This is natural. Because it's 45 degrees. Let's stretch. Let's feel the sweat running all over our bodies. <laughs> the soup smells nice. Have you been to a Bikram yoga place? <laughs> smells like sweaty bum. <laughs> if, you go, if you see a Bikram yoga place, just go in there for fun. Just open, the, as soon as you open the door, you, it's gonna kick you. You're gonna taste the umami in the air. You know? <laughs> God, it's brothy, and salty, and yeasty. <laughs> And the yoga mats are so youthy. <laughs> foot limitations, too many foot limitations by choice. There's one group of people that I hate. I call them fakeitarians. <laughs> fakeitarians are carnivores in denial. You know these people? You know these people, they go, they go like, they just, they're in denial. They're like, are you going to, Yvonne, are you going to, are you going to serve the prawns and the fish with the heads on? Yes, I'm going to serve the prawns and the fish with the heads on. Sorry, I can't eat that. But why? You said you love seafood and fish. Yeah, but it's got the heads on. It's got eyes. It's looking at me. I don't eat, yeah. It's good. As, I eat meat, but I don't eat dead animals, you know. <laughs> Who raised these people? Who? Like, Mommy, Mommy, look. Mommy, you need the prawns, they got the heads on. I don't wanna wanna eat the prawns because they're looking at me. Don't worry, don't worry my son. I'm gonna I'm gonna peel this prawn, I'm gonna peel the head of the prawn, I'm just gonna serve you just the prawn meat. Just the prawn meat. This prawn meat doesn't come from a dead prawn. No 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 no. It comes from a magical prawn meat tree that we have in the back, yeah. Why are you gonna limit your food options by choice? Like, really, we're running out of food. We're running out of food. I, I strongly believe that the more, the more variety of foods we eat, the more chances we have to survive. 20 years ago, I think, uh, an airplane from Uruguay with the Uruguayan rugby team crashing the Andes. And there was, there's a movie about this. In English, it's called Alive. Alive. Remember this movie? Alive. In Spanish, Sobrevivientes de los Andes. A life. Um, <laughs> this is a true story, real story. So they crash in the Andes. The few survivors, they had nothing. It's just snow and mountains. Just snow and mountains. It was nothing. You know what they did to survive? They had to eat their dead friends. Fernando, come on, have some Jose. <laughs> <laughs> but you serve her with the head on. <laughs> Maybe they survived because they were from Uruguay. Because in, in a, listen, in South America, we love to eat meat. We're carnivores in South America. Oh my God, pretty much every country in South America has a traditional barbecue, a traditional dish that involves a lot of meat. A lot of, we love meat in South America. I fucking love meat. I love Australia for the meat. Oh my God, the quality of the produce in Australia is amazing. The beef and the pork. Oh my God, the pork, I love the pork. <laughs> I'm just here for the pork. Thank you, Australia. <laughs> So good. And the Australian bacon. Oh my God, Australian bacon. Listen, in Venezuela, in the Americas, the bacon we have over there is American style bacon, which is a very thin strip of, super thin. It's a thin strip of pork belly. You can probably pretty much see through. When you cook it, it goes like, like that. 
And then I arrived to Australia and I was introduced to Australian bacon. Oh my God, Australian bacon! Massive bacon, gigantic bacon, you know fucking Flintstones bacon! Blue Mark, where's me fucking bacon? Bacon! Yabba dabba I'm here for the bacon. Last year, the, the WHO, the World Health Organization, said there's a new list of things that can cause you cancer. Yeah, this list of things was mainly processed meats. Number one on the list, bacon. No! I don't want to know bacon is bad for me. I don't want to know bacon is... Because bacon has given me so many good moments of joy and happiness in my life. I don't want to know something <laughs> that I love. I don't want to know that that thing is bad for me. I, it feels horrible. It feels terrible. And that made me realize so many things. For example, if you smoke cigarettes, I am sorry. I am sorry, because I used to be that stupid friend, that stupid idiot. If you smoked next to me, I would have gone like, you know smoking is bad for you. Foo, 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 there's no, eh, there's smoke. Foo, foo, you, you, look at food, it's bad for you. you. You're doing something bad for yourself. You start, sorry, I will never do that again. Never again. Because I know that you know, if you smoke, that smoking is bad. You know that. And I know you know you smoke because you fucking love it. And I get it now, because I will never stop eating bacon! <laughs> never! <laughs> never! Like, no, so sorry, I'm gonna say thank you. Thank you to the smokers. Thank you for training me. Oh my God, the resilience you have. I've been watching you all oh, through the years. Thank you for training me. Oh my God, like society wants to stop you from smoking. It's just barriers and hurdles and barriers and hurdles. I don't fucking care. I don't fucking <laughs> So I'm no, thanks to you, I'm ready. I'm ready for the next step, because I know that very soon they're going to prohibit to eat bacon indoors. <laughs> I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna eat my bacon out there. Just eat it out there. Like if, if it's a cold winter night, if it's a very hot summer night, I don't care if I had to eat my bacon two blocks away from the venue. If I had to eat my bacon in a designated area for bacon eaters. <laughs> I will eat my bacon, and one thing that I've learned from smokers, I will always bring extra bacon. <laughs> extra bacon, because you never know, you're probably eating your bacon again. Uh, sorry, man, if I can spare any bacon, mate. <laughs> of course, man, there you go. Ah, oh, fucking legend, thanks, mate. Uh, sorry, mate, can I, can I borrow your frying pan? <laughs> I love pork because my family is from Spain. In Spain, they love pork, pretty much. My grandma taught me how to eat pretty much every part of the pig, everything. The offal, the trotters, the, the snout. I always say snot. <laughs> it's not snot, it's snout. Snot is disgusting. <laughs> snout is disgusting too, <laughs> but it's delicious. And uh, in Spain, they eat pig's ears as well. Pig's ears. Look at your faces. Yeah, yeah. I know it makes sense. Do that face, of course. Do the face. Yeah, my goodness. But in Spain, they have this magical thing. They can turn ugly, disgusting food, make it delicious. Because my grandma, she, she, she can make that pig's ear. Like, I know what you think, you get pig's ear. What's in a pig's ear that you can eat? I know, it's just leathery and rubbery and chewy. There's not much difference between a pig's ear and a shoe. <laughs> they are both toys for dogs, it's the same. Oh my God, let me see the shoes. You got leather shoes, yeah, they're like leather. Okay, leather shoes, but sway, but leather, sway. Beautiful shoes, nice shoes. My grandma can cook that shoe. <laughs> Oh my God. She's gonna get the shoes. She's gonna put in a pressure cooker. She's gonna cook the, she's gonna cook on the pressure for a long time. She's cook it on the pressure a little, cause the shoe's like a pig's ear. It's gonna be rubber and leathery and it's just bleh, it's chewy. She's gonna cook a lot till it goes, te till it goes tender and, and, and soft and juicy. And uh, <laughs> she's gonna take it out after a while and then she's gonna slice it very thinly. She's gonna get a big pan with a lot of olive oil and garlic and parsley. And she's just throw it there, the slices. And she's gonna put a little dry chili called guindilla. Guindilla from Spain. So that, this little chili just adds a bit of flavor, not too much heat. So you have to add it whole, the whole guindilla. And then some Spanish sweet paprika, some sweet pimentones from Spain. 
and then she's going to get a tomato and she's going to with a box grater she's going to cut the tomato how she's going to grate the tomato she's going to get the pulp of the tomato it's a magical thing because she just cars the skin of the tomato and then tomato pulp a bit of salt and then she's going to get a splash of spanish sherry wine Jerez. And then she's gonna serve it in a beautiful clay pot from Sevilla, from the south of Spain. Beautiful clay pot. Oh my gosh, you're gonna serve it there with a with a with the crusty bread on the side, and then you're gonna get the chunk of that bread, and you're gonna go like that, and you go, mm, best fucking shoe you ever had in your life. <laughs> mm. mm. Need a glass of wine every time I say that. Is delicious. <laughs> I eat everything. Put it on a plate of fucking eat it. <laughs> There's one thing, one thing that I can't eat is my nemesis. Durian. Have you tried durian before? <laughs> or if you don't know what durian is, it's a fruit from Southeast Asia, it's massive, it's got wooden spikes, it's heavy, and it's deadly if it drops on your head. <laughs> and the, 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 it's, the, it's, it's, it's considered the smelliest fruit in the world. The description of the smell is rotten onions. Yeah, rotten onions. If you never smell a rotten onion, it means you never work in a restaurant. Um, <laughs> onions, imagine like a rotten egg full of sulfur. Oof, horrible. So onions have a lot of sulfur as well, but they also have a lot of sugar. So it ferments with the sulfur. <laughs> it's like rotten eggs times 10. Like, oh. when you eat durian, it feels like Someone inoculates a fart inside your mouth. Like, huh? 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 <laughs> Try it. Try it. <laughs> Don't worry. Try it. You might like it. A lot of people, you, either you love it or you hate it. You might like it. You might, you might not like it. Don't worry about fart breath. <laughs> Because here in Australia, you can find the strongest menthol lozenges in the world. <laughs> Fisherman's friends, what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh my God. What is that, those little pieces of brick you soaked in hospital grade disinfectant? <laughs> you eat one of those, even your soul feels fresh. It's like, <laughs> You eat one Fisherman's friend, you're gonna be farting penguins for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep talking about food. Um, Australia, you guys love to cook. I, t I have this discussion with all friends and they go, no, nah, mate, we don't fucking cook. We, we, we know fuck all about fucking cook. You love to cook, Australia. You love to cook and I can prove it. Australia is the only country in the world where you can find public, free public electric barbecues in parks. <laughs> free public electric barbecues in parks. Yes. It's amazing. For me, nothing says more Australia. For me, Australia is about a park with a public barbie surrounded by a big group of foreigners. <laughs> You get all the groups. You get all the groups. You get, you get, you get, you get the Lebanese and the Indians and the Pakistanis, and you get, and you get the, the Chinese and the Japanese, and you, and you get the, the, the international students, and you get the Latinos. Latinos. We never, we never go as a, a individual groups from our, from our countries because our communities as individual countries are too small. We go in a bigger group. We go as Latinos. <laughs> So we got like Venezuelans and Colombians and Argentinians and Ecuadorians and Chileans and we just believe it. So we just go all together. In Spanish, Latinos. In English, Mexicans. <laughs> Listen, we do this like if you're a Latino and you have family coming over for, to visit to Australia, they, like. The public barbie is a tourist attraction. <laughs> well, let's, everybody, let's go, let's make a barbie in the park. And then you bring all the fire. Look, you see? It's hot. <laughs> you see, Carlos, you see? 
You pay taxes in Australia. You pay tax first world country. You pay taxes, you can see where your tax money is going, you see? <laughs> In public, in public toilets? Free barbecues in parks. How about that? Amazing. Look, it's hot. It's hot, guys. It's hot. Oh, it's getting cold now. It's getting cold. It's getting... Wait, wait, my turn to press the button. Yeah. <clears throat> well done. I'm gonna tell you as we say here in Australia. Uh, well done, uh, mate. <clears throat> Well, thank you very much, uh, Kant. <laughs> Kant, uh, what is Kant? What is that word? Kant is like mate, but more Australian. Oh, see, oh, see, oh, see, 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 see. <laughs> Let me tell you a fun fact. Um, Venezuela, my country, is, is, is a South American country. It was colonized by the Spaniards, and then they brought slaves from Africa. We have zero culture influence from Britain or Asia. That means the Venezuela, as a community, as a culture, as a group of people, society, Venezuelans, we don't drink tea. <laughs> we don't drink tea. We don't drink tea. Tea is, 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 is hot, <laughs> and Venezuela is tropical, <laughs> and you sweat. <laughs> tea is only for winter. <laughs> we don't drink tea. We don't drink tea. We don't. Um, a fun fact, <laughs> we don't have kettles in Venezuela. We don't have electric kettles. That's not in the market. Electric kettles are not in the market. They're not in the market. Now, they have never been in the market. We don't, we don't have the, like, we don't have the need to boil water that many times a day. <laughs> we don't have electric kettles at all. We've never had them. This is a genuine conversation amongst Venezuelans who meet in Australia for the first time. <laughs> this conversation happens a lot. Probably in a barbecue area. <laughs> You go, hello, how are you, how are you, how are you, how, nice to meet you, nice to meet you, yeah. Um, uh, how long have you been here in Australia? Uh, two years, three years, three years, yeah, okay. <laughs> have you got an electric kettle? <laughs> yes, you, I know! It, it's a, I, amazing! Oh my God, I didn't know you can boil water that quickly! Oh my God, listen, I don't drink tea, but I do the pasta, I do the rice, I drink me the noodle, it's great! You can learn a lot about a country just by looking at the way people eat. Australia, tea drinking culture. There's a thing you can learn from a tea drinking culture. For example, there is a, there is a, there is a universal rule of conduct. If you go to someone's house for the first time, if you're a guest for the first time, you're not supposed to touch anything. Just don't touch anything. We know this. Australia, tea drinking culture. There's an exception to that rule. If you're a guest in someone's house for the first time, but you're in an area where you can see a kettle. Without asking for any permission, you can make yourself a cup of tea. I've learned this. Because I've learned that here in Australia, no one owns kettles or tea bags. They belong to the people. It's the closest thing to communism you've got. It's the closest thing. They belong to the people. Like, doesn't matter who you are, what you're doing, where you're from. Where are you? It doesn't matter. If you're in an area where there's a kettle, you can make yourself a cup of tea without asking for any permission. Like, honey, I heard something downstairs. I heard, I think someone broke into our home. Could you go check? Oh, yes, love. There's a guy here in the kitchen who is wearing a balaclava. He has a cricket bat. <laughs> Do something. I can't. He's making himself a cup of tea. <laughs> Tell him there's milk in the fridge. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you with one. Okay, one more story and I'm gone. And thank you so much for coming here tonight. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you for your laughter. Thank you for paying a ticket. Thank you for your attention, for listening to the jokes. You fucking bonza. <laughs> thank you so much. 
my um my grandma lives with my mum and dad. Um, beautiful old lady from Spain. I call my family weekly just to check on them. They check on me. They're still in Venezuela. And every now and then I talk to my grandma. One day I was talking to her. I was, I was talking to my mom. Ah, can I speak to grandma? To my uh, abuela? Abuela, you talk to abuela. And yeah, here's your, here's your abuela. Okay. Abuela, how are you? Yeah. Hello, how are you? So, <laughs> she never goes. She's from Spain. She's like, Hello, son. Are you happy? Are you enjoying life? Is, how, is life good to you? Are you doing what you like to do? She never asked this because she's from Spain. She goes, hello, son. Have you been eating? What are you eating? Are you eating well? <laughs> I go, yes, grandma, I've been eating. Listen, grandma, the other day I, eat, I ate kangaroo. She goes, kangaroo? Yeah, kangaroo. Can mm. Is that like a big rat? <laughs> oh, yes, Abuela, it's like, like a big rat. Mm, I understand. It's OK, son. Back in, back in the day, during the Spanish Civil War, I was, I was a little girl. I still remember. We had to eat rat. I understand if Australia is not treating you well. <laughs> it's very hard to be an immigrant. I've been there. But it's OK, son. You'll be better. You, this is what you need to do, OK? Get the rat. <laughs> Put it in a pressure cooker. <laughs> Best fucking rat you've ever had in your life. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Ciao.